Back in World War II, the Japanese Imperial Army used kamikaze boats, which were like suicide missions. Small boats or even aircraft would charge at much bigger ships and hit them at lightning speed. Japanese records indicate that more than 6,000 kamikaze or shinyo boats were built during World War II. The word kamikaze translates literally from Japanese as divine wind. It's derived from a typhoon which destroyed a Mongolian invasion force in 1281. Kamikaze warfare is a form of suicide attack in which pilots or soldiers would use planes or boats or even themselves as human bombs in order to inflict maximum damage on the target. This method was seen as a last resort for the Japanese who had already lost most of their naval forces and their air power in the Pacific theater during World War II. The US Naval Archives describes these kamikaze attacks something like this. On the surface of the water, it took the form of a shinyo, a small special attack boat which utilized the explosive charge in its bow by ramming the side of the intended victim. These motorboats were collected in special attack basins along the coast or carried on motherships. Such suicide craft were manned by middle school boys aged 15 and 16. It is reported that a supply of volunteer pilots was obtained because of special privileges, early responsibilities, fast promotions and the promise of a posthumous monetary award to the volunteers' parents." Unquote. The 17-foot boats were made of plywood. They were designed to be built quickly and cheaply. The driver sat in a small cockpit at the stern of the vessel. In the bow was a 500-pound bomb, purpose-built to explode after ramming a ship. In between the driver and the bomb sat the engine, which was a big Chevrolet in most cases. After the war broke out, the Japanese took over a US-owned Chevrolet plant in Japan. In the 10 years prior to the war, the Chevrolet factory had turned out 100,000 cars. The engines made there were repurposed for the war, turned against American forces. The engine in the Shinyo is a straight six-cylinder, as you'd see in a truck back in the day. The big Chevy engines made for fast boats. The Shinyo is reported to hit 35 miles per hour, which was quite a speed on the water as far as the 1940s were concerned. As a plan of attack, the Shinyos were usually deployed at night using the cover of darkness to sneak upon unsuspecting destroyers. Once they were closed, the driver would hit the gas and approach the target at breakneck speed. The bomb in the bow was fitted with fuses that were designed to explode upon impact. Cut to 70 years later. A video circulating on social media appears to show a kamikaze Russian drone boat attacking a key Ukrainian bridge connecting the country to Moldova. The black and white grainy video shows the small craft speeding towards the Zatoka bridge, which is south of Odessa. As it passes underneath, an explosion takes place. Smoke can be seen billowing out from under the bridge, but it's not apparent how much damage was done. Some analysts on Twitter suggested it was a drone boat carrying explosives, while others suggested it could be an uncrewed surface vessel. The video was widely shared by Russian media and pro-Russia telegram channels. In fact, according to the Daily Mail, Evgeny Podobny, who's the military correspondent for the Russian state broadcaster VGTRK, said that almost a year after the start of the special military operation, we have started using marine unmanned drones, unquote. The railway bridge in Zatoka is a gateway for equipment, ammunition and Western and Soviet models which are produced by various former fraternal republics of Eastern Europe. According to The Telegraph, Russian media confirmed through geolocation that the video does show an attack on the Zatoka bridge. Still, they did note that there had been no reports of any damage. While Ukraine has used drone boats to attack Russian targets in the Black Sea, this may perhaps be the first reported use of drone boats by Russia. Russia has previously tried to bomb the Zatoka Bridge from the air, which was used to deliver supplies to Ukrainian forces through Moldova, but Russia had limited success through that method. This attack now comes amid reports that Russia appeared to have finally launched its long-feared new offensive in eastern Ukraine. 
Now, if this is the first time that Russia has used kamikaze uncrewed surface vessels, then the important question is, how do Russian forces control them? At the least, the Russians must have line-of-sight connectivity with these boats. If not, there have to be more advanced communication systems like controls to the USVs. Another important question is, where did Russia acquire these systems from? And the answer to this could be Iran, which is known to have pioneered this capability in the Middle East. Back in 2017, Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen had used an unmanned explosive-laden boat to storm a Saudi frigate Al Madina in the Southern Red Sea. It exploded at the stern of the frigate, killing two sailors and injuring three more. When asked if the object used to strike the Zatoka Bridge could be Iranian technology, experts said that it is possible that it is Iran. However, Russia too has the technological base to do this internally without Iran's help. Reports also suggest the Russian forces could use USVs elsewhere on the Black Sea, particularly around Odessa and even the port city of Ochakiv. Ochakiv has come under repeated Russian bombardment. Furthermore, the Russian military could also use such USVs on the Dnipro River to strike Ukrainian positions in and around the city of Kherson from where its troops had to withdraw in early November last year. Ukraine has used explosive-laden unmanned boats before as well, including a large-scale strike that happened in October in Sevastopol, which is home of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Russian sources claim that Ukraine had used them again a few weeks later at the Sheshkari Harbour in Russia's Black Sea port of Novorossiysk. Now, Kiev has also launched a fundraising effort to purchase as many as a hundred of such boats. So, all in all, it goes to prove that both for Russia and for Ukraine, these unmanned vehicles, whether they're on the surface of the water or whether they're flown in the air, happen to be the chosen medium of attack, at least as far as this special military operation is concerned. It changes the dynamic of not just this current war, but possibly future ones as well. The game uh, pretty much changed in those first uh, 40 minutes. It's what you do after failure that defines who you are. Walking the streets of the future is really going to be breathtaking.